All right, getting straight into it. If you know me or watch my channel, you know I like to cut right through the noise and get to what matters. This video is no different. This video will be for YouTubers, podcasters, voice actors, live streamers, basically any type of content creator. The best audio interface isn't an Apollo or a Babyface or a John Hardy. Like with anything, just because it costs an astronomical amount of money doesn't make it the best. It comes down to what your needs are, and especially these days, you don't need to go out and spend thousands or even hundreds of dollars to get a quality interface. For those of you who may not know exactly what an audio interface does, I'll explain briefly right now. Audio interfaces convert microphone and instrument signals into a format your computer and software recognize. In other words, you have an XLR microphone, but you need what you say into that microphone to be picked up and recorded so you can then edit it. Well, your audio interface is what allows you to do this. You speak into your microphone that's plugged into your interface. The interface converts and routes that signal to your computer and then finally into your DAW of choice. Your DAW could be Adobe Audition, Audacity, Pro Tools, Cubase, doesn't matter, whatever your preference. I'm all always suggesting the Focusrite Scarlett Solo to my students and will continue to. It's only $120, but it sounds amazing and does everything 95% of people need it to do. That goes for voice actors, YouTubers, podcasters, live streamers, you get the idea. You don't need to go out and spend large amounts of money for quality, but when would you actually want to go out and spend the money on a higher-end interface? Well, I'll go ahead and start with it's not when you want crisp, clean, great-sounding audio because these days the majority of name-brand interfaces will give you just that. Obviously, there's always exceptions here, but those exceptions grow smaller and smaller each day. The main reason you'd want to go out and spend the extra money on a higher-end interface is when you want the extra bells and whistles. What do I mean? Well, the best example of this would be front-end processing. And I know some of you are out there scratching your head saying, well, what the heck is front-end processing, James? Well, I'm gonna tell you. The easiest way to explain this is by using Instagram. You take a photo, you begin the upload process, and you're taken to the edit page. This is the page where you can make a bunch of creative changes to the photo, like increasing or decreasing the brightness, the contrast, the saturation, the colors. Well, you can do the exact same thing with audio, with things like equalization, compression, reverb, noising, limiting, and so on. But you do all of this after taking the photo or recording the audio, right? Well, front-end processing allows you to add all of these creative choices during the recording process rather than having to wait until after the fact. The best example of this would be radio. Let's take a talk show, for example. During the talk show, the hosts and the guests are talking at a normal level, and then all of a sudden, they burst out into laughter or they start talking really loud. Well, without front-end processing like compression or limiting, whenever they burst out into laughter or get really loud, they would end up clipping their audio, which would result in nasty-sounding digital distortion because it would overload the preamps. However, when you put a compressor or limiter or both in the front of the chain, every time the hosts or guests get loud, the front-end processing, compression, limiting, would catch the peaks in the audio and keep it from clipping or distorting. This would be the main reason you would want to actually go out and spend the extra money on a higher-end interface, an interface that would actually allow you to use front-end processing. But honestly, as long as you properly set your levels up front, this isn't really a problem. Though, if you're not just a solo content creator and you're recording something like a podcast with multiple guests, I would definitely recommend getting an interface that have these features. The Apollo line of interfaces are very well known for their front-end processing capabilities. I'll probably make a video talking all about just that in the future, but my main interface is the Apollo Twin here in my studio. However, when I'm at the studio at work, I'm simply using a Focusrite 2i2. And honestly, I could have just bought a Focusrite Solo and been just fine, but I wanted the capabilities of recording two microphones at once just in case I needed it. And I also have a UA Volt 276 that I use here in my studio at home every once in a while. In my next video, I'll list out my top seven audio interfaces that I recommend, but Long story short, don't fall for the hype that you need a thousand dollar interface to get great sounding audio, because you don't. And if anyone ever tells you you do, politely look at them dead in the eyes and say, well, you know what they say.